nearly <laughs> fell in then. <laughs> I'm used to a front central armrest and I'd put that up when I was photographing it. So there you go. My name is Barry Crampton. Um, today I'm going to show you around our Land Rover Freelander. Then I'll take you for a ride in it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a Freelander 2, 2.2 TD4 GS four wheel drive. It's a Euro 5 engine, 2012 on a 12 plate, has done 70,649 miles, fuel economy, urban 32.7 miles per gallon, extra urban 49.6 miles per gallon, and combined is 40.4 miles per gallon. Has a top speed of 112 miles per hour, that's for four cylinder, 148 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. It has six spoke alloy wheels sh shod with Goodyear Wrangler tires, high pressure headlamp wash, big Land Rover badge on the front to be proud of, British. The lower part of the door is uh, covered in plastic, protect from stone chips, electric boot release from the remote, tow bar. It has the Isofix rear Chelsea tanker points and reversing sensors. Um, I'll just tell you the service history before I forget, which uh, for some reason come into this park, I, I seem to, I don't know why. Um, 18th of the 3rd, 2013 at 4,456 miles, Ripon Land Rover. 18th of the 3rd, 2014 at 11,052 miles, Ripon Land Rover. 11,000 of the 3rd, 2015 at 19,783 miles, Ripon Land Rover. 15th of the 3rd, 2016 at 28,113 miles, Ripon Land Rover. 6th of the 4th, 2017 at 34,008 miles, Ripon Land Rover, 28th of the 3rd, 2019, at 46,055 miles, David Spirit Motor Engineers, 14th of the 4th, 2020, at 53,940 miles, David Spirit Motor Engineers, and on the 11th of the 3rd, 2021, at 60,049 miles, at Green Oval Garage, obviously the Green Oval refers to the Land Rover badge, um, it was serviced and it had timing belt and water pump. 24th of the 3rd, 2022 at 66,184 miles, Green Noble Garage. So that's the service history. It's got a great service history. I am, we have priced the car accordingly and it has, I'll, I'll be, totally honest with you because I can't lie to save my life the front heated screen doesn't work it works on the passenger side doesn't work on the driver's side now again as I said I can't I, I can't lie <laughs> heated front screen is a fantastic option um, normally it's about 500 quid to get a, a heated screen fitted now Apart from that, the rest of the screen is fine. Now we, we've got a customer who we've, we've actually been looking for a car for about six months for. And it's always difficult when you're looking for a car for somebody because John, especially, um, he won't buy any cars with our money that we aren't like 90% sure about. But with a customer's money, he won't buy a car that he's not 100% sure about. Um, anyway. We, we couldn't find this lady a car that, that John would buy. And she saw one in Auto Trader, so she asked us about it, and we, we said, yeah, it sounds, sounds good, it's off another dealer, yeah, it's, it's great. On the way home, Stone hit a windscreen and put a big chunk, took a big chunk out of the windscreen. So you, you can never tell. Now, at the moment, you don't need a heated windscreen. You may have never used a heated windscreen in your life, and you might not be bothered about it. So, if you want a heated screen, if you want it replacing, there's no chips in it or anything like that, it's perfect. If you want it replacing, it's another 300 pounds on top of the car. I hate wasting money, and, and at the moment, we're wasting so much in the motor trade, and us as a small business, the amount of money that we waste is, is just unbelievable. And I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, oh, Baz, yeah, sure. If, if you were buying it, you'd want the heated screen working. Well, I, I've just, I've bought a new Citroen Ami and it turns out it was damaged before I got it. And to put it right, it needs a new, a new driver's door. Drive, it's left-hand drive, so it needs a new driver's door and it really needs a new shell. 
to put it right, to, to make it how it should be or should have been when I got the car. But what a waste. The car's made out of plastic. What a waste, a new shell, because it's got some marks on it. It's my car and I don't want to do it. So, screen, if you want it, fine. If you want to leave it, see how you get on and then get it done yourself, fine. But so long as you know the screen on the right hand side works, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Don't think you'll be able to fix it. We thought it might be a, a, a the switch, it might be the, a relay, it might be a fuse. No, it looks like the car has had a screen before and whichever numbskull put the screen in, it's made a good job of sealing it and putting it in, but there's a, there's an, a ribbon at the bottom which attaches to the electrics. And unfortunately, they haven't made sure that the ribbon is out of the way so as the wipers have been on, the motor and the wiper mechanism has been rubbing against the ribbon and it's rubbed through it. That's why it is and, and it can't be repaired. So that's the reason. Right, after all that, it, it's a great car. I like these. I particularly like this one because um, it's simple, it's no, you know, kind of comms unit up here with, with a sat nav that's, that goes out of date within 12 months. It's just got a radio, it's got heated seats. It's a lovely car, it's a lovely colour combination. They are, these Freelanders, they have become so sought after. Every time we get one, we'll have to, I wish I had some wood to touch. Every time we get one, we sell it very, very quickly. And uh, let's face it, everybody uses the phone now. And if you want a sat nav, if you want a sat nav screen, anything uh, like that, you can now get one for about £80 that syncs with your Apple phone, your iPhone or your Android phone, and it does everything. It, it's, it's like an Apple CarPlay, and it's £80 or £90. The old systems are defunct. They, they're, just, they're just not worth it. Now we've got power folding dormers. The, the best thing about the, as I said, the, the sound system, uh, forget about that, but it's got Alpine speakers in the, in the car, so the speakers are fantastic. We'll just check the dormers, make sure everything else works. Yeah, get that and that, that's fine. Power steering, as you'd expect, but it's got Heinrich adjustable steering wheel there, multifunction steering wheel. And it's, it's just just nice and simple. Um, and I, I'm now of the mind that cars are way, way too complicated. They should go back to the old days. I think they should have wind up windows. For it, two room, we've got two vehicles in at the moment that have got, there's two cameras. And it's a camera you'll probably never use like here on, on the, the car we've got it's got cameras in the bumper and you can see when you're pulling out of um, a junction like that you, you, as you pull out but it's it's in a Range Rover unless there's another Range Rover parked at the junction you can see over everything it's 380 quid plus fitting and nobody will ever use it They'll want it when they come to buy it. Oh yeah, yeah must have must have the side view camera. They'll never use it. I never use them. So it's just another waste of money. And to be honest, I, I'd I'd rather. I, I am of the opinion, I'd rather have a a petrol or a diesel car. And and from my dealings with EV owners on the internet and on Twitter, it, it's, it seems to be almost like a religion or a cult. And um, if you don't have an EV or you don't want one, then there's something wrong with you. You, you, you mentally unstable or if you don't agree with them, there's gotta be something wrong with you. Nothing wrong with them, it's gotta be you. And I, I, I'm really, I've got an, I've got a little EV, they sit around me brilliant for what I do, coming back and forwards to work, um, it makes me not want it. <laughs> it, 
<laughs> Every time I see them go on about a rant about how cheap they are to charge, and then completely ignore the fact that most of them have dropped 40%, the EVs this is, most of them have dropped 40% in the last six, eight months. And, you, you know, these, they just lie. Just totally ignore the kind of elephant in the room, the depreciation, that, that not everybody wants one. You don't want, not want an electric vehicle. But you jump in this, and, and as I've said before, you know very well that you could go anywhere in it. It doesn't matter what the weather's like. Um, up here was flooded the other day. In fact, when I was coming to work in my Citroen Ami, it was flooded. And of course, salt water, if salt water gets in the battery, it can cause a short and set the thing on fire. It shouldn't get in the battery because it should be sealed. But it does, you know, things happen. So, You know, you just go straight through the water in this and not, not worry about it. It's a lovely car to drive. You've got a great commanding driving position. You know it's well built. It feels very sturdy. You know your family's going to be pretty safe in it. You, you've got airbags in the A pillar and the, the B pillar. Let me say C pillar. It's, it's made to last. Land Rovers are made to last. I love them. The best car on the road. They really are. I, my armrest here which can be adjusted like so to get in a comfortable driving position and it's just like driving in your armchair. Everything's easy to use. You've got cruise control, cruise control there set, that's it on. I was in a um, Skoda yesterday, Volkswagen Group car. You've got to switch it on, then you've got to click minus, and then you've got to click plus to get it up to what setting it is. If you want to resume, you click plus to resume or or reset it, you've got to, again, you've got to click minus, and I was clicking the wrong ones all the time. Land Rover, Range Rover, brilliantly simple. The sat-nav in the Skoda, honestly, I nearly punched it out of the dashboard. It was so stupid and difficult to use. So again, the sat-navs in Range Rover is dead easy to use. It's just, you know, you can, you can park anywhere. You don't pull up at Starbucks and take the lip spoiler off the front of your car because it's so low. In fact, if you want to drive over the curb, you can drive over the curb. Great cars. Aircon, the aircon's nice and cool. You've got heated seats here. The automatic aircon there if you want. If the front air heated screen was working, that's a switch for it. But as I say, we can get it done for £300 if you want. The car is actually £300 cheaper than we would normally be advertising it for. So, you know, you, you're not losing out. Just tell us if you want it, we'll get it done for you. But it just seems to me to be a waste of good glass that <laughs> from now, the state of the roads, from now to when you actually need the heated front screen, there's a good possibility that you, you could get a stone chip and need to replace it anyway. That's the way I'm thinking at the moment. I just, I see so much waste and it's, it's just so annoying. Um, things that you can't repair anymore on cars, you've got to replace. It's just crazy. It really is. Anyway, this is a nice example. I'm not going round numbskull roundabout. I'm going the other way.
good turn of speed. I think, I think it's economical for the size of the car. I really do. I've, I've run one of these time and time again. I like my Range Rover Sport. I'm using a Citroen Ami. <laughs> this, honestly, the the way the way it drives next to driving a Citroen Ami, it's it's like a Rolls Royce or. A, let's say a Bentley Continental, which was one of my favourite cars to drive, a Range Rover Sport. It's what you used to. It's the, uh, it's the old square shape as well, which I prefer. Right, so, what have we got? CD radio, there will be an AUX in somewhere. I'm going to switch that off again. Do you know, I can't remember where the AUX in is. Maybe in the uh, glove box. But anyway, here you've got your terrain response, nice and easy. Swamp, minefield, Christmas, Mexico. Just out, everything so nice and simple. Indicated on the left, wipers on the right. Rev counter on the left in the centre. In the clock at the top, you have coolant temperature on the left, fuel gauge on the right. In the new Land Rovers, they get to a certain stage and then it starts giving you a readout of how much fuel you've got left in a percentage. Who wants that? You either want miles or you want a gauge. <laughs> Underneath is your information display. It's saying it's 11.47 at the moment, 20 degrees centigrade outside. You, you might know we're... Uh, you see the news, the big heat wave and the, the planet's melting. Here's me with a polar neck on. It says on there it's 20 degrees outside. It's been raining, raining this morning. It's been cloudy, it's been cold, it's been sunny. It's been everything. The only thing we haven't had today so far is snow. Oh, Chinook. Chinook helicopter over there. That'll be thumping away. Um, car drives great, no funny, it's not pulling anywhere, as you can see it's got great acceleration, I'm actually going too fast there, with a bit of luck we'll go down the M65, towards the Chinook, oh no we're going away from the Chinook, I've lost, I've lost my bearings here. This is a nightmare. I'm going to go. I'm going to go towards Blackburn. side to it anyway it's lovely to drive we've got plenty of fuel right back to the instrument display now I can't see the Chinook anymore and I'm going the wrong completely the wrong direction um, at the bottom we've got instantaneous fuel consumption if I click the end there, average speed, that's nothing, that's the trip computer, that's range, so we've got 91 miles left before I need to fill up, or put some fuel in, 
and it actually just went up. Now we've got on the motorway and we're doing more miles to the gallon, my range is increasing. You don't see that on EVs, do you? We really do need to cloth as well. You know, back in the old days, in the very old days, Opal Senators came out and there was an option that you could delete the leather and have cloth instead. And, and quite often we would order a Senator without leather with, with cloth. And, um, well, Ray would order it without uh, leather. And it wasn't that we thought we'd sell it, it was more that we knew somebody would want a car with cloth and that nobody else would have ordered one of these vehicles and that we could then swap that vehicle for anything we wanted and, and even charge a dealer more money. <laughs> we, we could sell it to a dealer for more money. So that's, and that's, and I'm the same now. I like the look of leather. I prefer the look of leather but I'd rather sit on cloth. It's more comfortable. Again, my, my Citroen Ami, it's got vinyl seats. I'd rather it had cloth seats. This has got kind of walnut insets there. Got aluminium here, the aluminium matches these bits on the steering wheel and your door handles and your, your, your vent movers <laughs> tabs whatever you want to call it it's just a just a simple car and we had a um, Christ what was it called an infinity and it, that was a great car to drive a lovely car and it had wood, but it, it had what I'd call Japanese wood. And, and I'm not being racist. The, the, the wood that is in Japanese cars looks like... We, we, used to, we used to bind our books when I was at school with stuff called Fablon to make them last longer. You know, you, first, first day, First day at school, you'd get issued with all your new books. Go home at night, and my mum would, li had, <laughs> had line them or, or coat them with Fablon. And they, they'd, they'd probably still be like new today. But it was like a plastic wood with sticky stuff on the back. The wood in Land Rovers and Range Rovers and Jaguars always looks good. It looks nice. It doesn't look like Japanese wood. Or, or wood in, right, a better way of phrasing it, it doesn't look like wood in Japanese cars. So, just lovely to drive. There's, uh, I've, I've just seen a, another press release recently from Honda Honda have stopped making the uh, Honda E because people prefer SUVs these days. It's nothing to do with the fact that they're not selling. It's people prefer SUVs these days. Why wouldn't you? Your family's safer. They're easier to get in and out of. You get more stuff in them. They're more practical, they're more versatile. And if you're in an accident, you know, you've, you've, you've certainly got more chance of surviving in a bigger car. And Land Rovers, they're just the best. Our, uh, our, our old customer with 
he's he's got two Range Rovers, 380,000 mile. One of them's done. He's looking to change his newer one. If you probably watch this video, um, he's looking to change his newer one. But the old one's on 380,000 mile. That's that's to the moon, and uh, over halfway back again. And this one's only done, was it 70, 70,600 and something, or 70,662 at the moment. You know, tow bar on it, stick your trailer on, get all your rubbish to the tip, or caravan. I saw an advert for a Tesla yesterday, and the Tesla has done 175,000 miles, which is which is good. And he's swapping it because he wants a tow car. So it'd have been better, perhaps, keeping his Tesla and buying a an older used Freelander because they're a bargain. Absolute bargain. If you want to know any more, I, hopefully I've told you everything. But if you do want to know any more, you can live chat us, email us, call us landline, mobile, text us, WhatsApp, you name it. Um, but there'll be about between 80 and 100 photos of this on the internet by tonight and a 30 minute test drive video and, and look all around. The only thing I can see really on the car, the only thing I've noticed is the, the back bumper. Um, is, uh, there's a mark on the back bumper but the car's 11 years old and uh, the rest of it is lovely condition. So we're nearly back at the garage. It's 11.57, lunchtime. <laughs> and uh, so I'll finish the, finish the test drive here and we'll see you in the next video. We've got some lovely cars. You, well, you'll see them as I, as I pull up. We've got some lovely cars. We've, we've got another Range Rover Vogue, which is a four-seater. Um, you, you know, like, uh, you know, Rocky, <laughs> the Rocky Horse analogy isn't a good one. Um, hen's teeth. It's like hen's teeth, four-seater, beautiful car. We've got an Audi Q7, got an Evoque coming. Let's see all these. We've got a Volvo Estate, they've just stopped making Volvo Estates. Come and buy our Volvo Estate, it's lovely. We didn't even get a chance to advertise at Audi A1 or video it, sold straight away. Toyota van there. That ML should have gone by now. We've got an i3, a BMW i3 electric. You know what I think of electric cars. That's had more views than anything, but it hasn't sold. Got a Renault Megane Estate there. I videoed the, the Skoda yesterday. So all, all good. Got some lovely cars and more coming. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ta-da.